Hello, this will be a video on how I painted my Morris Minor over the course of a month. This is what the Morris Minor looked like before I painted it. It had house paint on it, which was not ideal. It's been like this for two years now, so I finally thought it was time to give it a better paint job. The first task was actually to remove all the house paint off the car. This was extremely tedious and very time consuming, and I hated every moment of it. This took about three weeks to do because I had to get the house paint out of every nook and cranny, otherwise the new paint would actually react to the house paint. I did most of it with all the panels in place on the car. I later did remove them. There was a lot of damaged paintwork on the car. This particular place actually had the whole section chipped out and I just bogged over it and then sanded it smooth. The car had an enormous amount of bog everywhere on it and I was finding I had to add more myself as well because there were just tiny little rust pinholes or places that just weren't right. Next I started removing the kick plates off the sills. As you can see the sills are pretty disgusting. They've had so much welding done to them over the years just to keep it on the road. Either way I cleaned them up as best as I could later. Here's some photos of what the kick plates look like when I took them off the car. And also the procedure I went through to get all of that house paint off in preparation for the primer. I started off with some paint stripper, a scraper and a wire brush. And after most of it was off, I resorted back to the pneumatic sander. Same thing for these rails that went on the side. These go below the door. I don't know what their names are. I also applied a light coat of rust converter. Here you can see the final transition between the old yucky kick plates. And after they've been bogged and sanded and ready for primer. I put the kick plates up on a cardboard box because at this stage I was really just testing out the primer just to see what works best before I tackle the car. At this point the paint I had ordered for the car last week had finally come through. The paint was colour matched to the existing green inside the car. The bloke at the paint shop recommended I use a single build primer surfacer and an industrial enamel. He also sold me on 4 litres of thinner. I thinned it out and adjusted the compressor according to the data sheet. This was the result. This was the result after two coats and a bit of light sanding. The next day, after the primer had fully cured and any defects were sanded, I sprayed the color coat. This was the result after two coats of paint. It came out pretty good considering the previous condition of those kick plates. The next steps were just to continue prepping the car and getting rid of the house paint. Again, this was so, so tedious and I hated every moment of it. I started removing all the panels, the bonnet, the doors, bumpers, stuff like that. Some mounting hardware I ended up drilling out because it was just so rusty or it was damaged in some way so there was no way to get it out. Here's the bonnet and boot lid in preparation for primer. I removed all the badges and hardware. This is the first coat of primer. Everything was sanded nice and smooth prior to this and everything was wiped down with brake cleaner. This is the result after the first coat of primer. There are a few defects so I came back about an hour later and sanded them out. All this wrinkly stuff is from the old house paint reacting to the primer. After that I sanded everything down with some fine sandpaper ready for the second coat. The next day I wiped everything down with a clean rag and the brake clean and applied the first coat of colour. This was the final result. I ended up putting another coat of colour on those kick plates and I also invested in a little dryer for the paint gun because I was getting a bit of water from the compressor. After a few days I moved them to the garage next door for storage. And here it is a few days later after I got all the badges and bits and bobs like a license plate on. The next task was prepping the bumpers. This car must have been in a small crash before because the bumpers were kind of bent. I ended up using a little hammer and a block of metal to kind of flatten the bumpers out. Other than that, it was just the usual sand and bog. Here are the bumpers with all the chrome masked off ready for paint. The masking took about two hours. And the same old same old with the doors, sanding and prepping for paint. Except this time it took way longer because the doors had way more nooks and crannies to worry about. I took the door cards and the handles out obviously and masked off whatever I couldn't take off easily. I then set up a little paint booth in my garage with some old drop sheets. And here are the doors and bumpers after the first coat of primer. As usual I gave them a light sand before applying the second coat. The next day I applied the first colour coat. 
the procedure was the same as everything else that was done before. Unfortunately, due to my rookie painting skills, there were a few runs and a bit of orange peel. However, I managed to resolve these after they were dry, or before they dried, using a lint-free rag and a bit of paint thinner. Then after a few hours, I flipped it around and did the other side. This was the final result after a few days. I moved it to the garage next door after they had cured for storage. I also prepped the inside of the door jams and anywhere else that is usually covered. This was such a nightmare because all the nooks and crannies made it impossible to get a sander in so I either had to use paint stripper or do it by hand. But then I also found out a flap disc on an angle grinder works really really well so I resorted to using that. This is what it looked like towards the end. And here's the car after about 99% of the sanding work is done. I put the vehicle up on jack stands and it's ready for masking now. And here it is all masked up. It took about two days to do after work. Now it just needs to be cleaned and ready for primer. Here's the vehicle after primer. The inline dryer on my spray gun actually started to fail, but luckily it was still usable. And now for the colour like the rest of the parts. I let the paint cure for about half an hour, but while it was still soft I removed all the masking paper and tape. And this is the final result. All that was left to do now is wait a day for the paint to cure and get the rest of the car back together. At this point the parts sitting in the garage next door had been left alone for about a week or more now. Assembly took two days and it was fairly straightforward, other than tackling a few alignment issues and strips bolts. It was also a bit cumbersome as I was the only one reassembling the car and there was no one there to help me lift up big parts like the bonnet. Other than that I'm very pleased with the result. It was never going to be a perfect paint job but it's much better than what it was before. I gave the car a good wash and cleaned out the engine bay and suspension from any dirt or dust. The weather was pretty yucky outside but I couldn't resist taking out for a test drive. Morris Minor all painted, all done. It's the middle of the night right now. Go for a test drive down the road. Not bad. Yeah, it looks alright. A few defects, but a bit of orange peel. Homemade, but overall not bad. I like it. This is still my daily vehicle, of course. I've been using it for the past three weeks as usual. I've been using it to lug around my tools and get me to work and whatnot. As you would expect, the paint is still absolutely fine and not showing any problems. The weather here in New Zealand hasn't been the greatest lately, so I've been driving the car in some fairly heavy rain. Only a few small spots of rust have started to show up, where panels don't quite line up and rub a little bit. Other than that, it's not a major concern, and I'm very happy with it. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.